days to go until heavyweight boxer Tyson Fury takes to the ring uh, to fight Deontay Wilder in Las Vegas. And his wife Paris will be right there by his side supporting me fly out. Flying out tomorrow. Tomorrow. Well, it comes as the couple are giving everyone, especially you, you love this documentary series. You've got to a watch it. Glimpse into their it. marriage. It's very good. And their family life in a very frank and honest new documentary series. It's called Tyson Fury, The Gypsy King. You are punching above your weight. Hey, with. The thing is with Paris, though, she does truly love me. Because she pines for me. As do I with her. Same. From being 16 year old, I've loved this man. Even in the bad times, I think, I really hate you, but I love you. So I think that's why we get through. Do you know what? This is the kind of place you need, isn't it, when you're on a holiday? So you can go by yourself and not get bothered. So you speak for so many couples when you say, I really hate you, but I love you. Yeah, and that's kind of almost universal, isn't it? <laughs> you are, as I said, incredibly honest in this. And we have to touch on this here because of what happened to poor Caroline Flack. You're very, very honest, both of you, about his mental health yes. and the issues that he's had. It's completely open about it. Um, it. Basically explaining that just because he's extremely successful and powerful in the literal mm -hmm. sense, he's also very vulnerable. Yeah. Why did you decide to do that and share that with everybody? Because Tyson is a positive story of this sort of mental health problem. I think he went through such a dark time, he was so close to killing himself at times. And then he's come round full circle and come back to himself. So it's just to put that message out there that you can get through it. You should never, ever hide away and never, ever succumb to the darkness. Mm. But also what it shows and what Tyson sums up so beautifully, and you do quite painfully, really, is that success on the outside does not make you healthy in your mind necessarily. No. It doesn't bring you that happiness that you think having all of those outside external signals of success. Yeah. Um, actually, what really matters is that he needs to see you. Yeah. And you were just saying, because he's obviously in Las Vegas now, isn't he? He Parents is, he's over in Vegas, yeah. And so tell me how that relationship, how much he needs you in order, you and the kids to focus and <coughs> keep well, him... at the moment, he says he's going to switch his phone off to the outside world, but he's just going to keep contact with me and the kids, and it just, it's just an aim to think, right, I'm coming home soon, I'm coming home soon. Mm. And it keeps him that dedication that he thinks, after the fight, I can go home and go back to the wife and kids. And I think it's just something to support him behind everything that's the madness that's going on, even though our home is mad. <laughs> <laughs> it's more yeah, your entire that brood. There. Tell us the names of your kids. They are fantastic names. We've got Venezuela Linda, <laughs> Prince John Venezuela James. Venezuela Linda. Yes. I love Well, that's you. the granny's name. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> Venezuela Linda, Prince John James, Prince Tyson Luke, Valencia Amber, and Prince Adonis Amber. You've really forgotten that. Really <laughs> You know, when the doctors ask me for the date of birth, I'm like, um, just a minute. <laughs> I'm not but surprised. It's uh, obviously they don't get them full titles. You've got Venezuela Prince. All right. 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 Let's talk about, about you here. I mean, Boxers' wives come in all shapes and sizes in whether or not they go and watch their husband or their partner actually yep. in the ring. And some can't do it. Nope. And they stay well away. As we said, you're getting the plane to Vegas tomorrow. As usual, you'll be there, you'll be watching. But you're not immune to it. You say that you feel every punch. And when things go wrong, you're there, you literally almost, to pick up the pieces. Is it almost physically painful watching him? It really ring? is. And it's getting harder every time because, obviously, the level of the boxers that he fights is higher up. So every fight is harder. Every fight you get more punches, more problems, more cuts. And Deontay Wilder is known to have the hardest punch in the world. I mean, I he think is. in the documentary that I saw last week, it was um, Frank Bruno said he'd rather be hit by a bus than be hit by this guy. <laughs> exactly. And yet Tyson, Tyson, Tyson was ring. hit twice yes. when they met in 2018 and came yeah. back from that. He did. He went down and got back up and it was horrible to watch. It was terrible. I actually really didn't want him to box anymore after watching that fight, mm. especially even the last fight he got at this massive court. But every time it's hard, but Tyson says you can't go swimming and not get wet. He loves it. He loves the sport. He loves the fight. Do you worry about brain damage? Do you worry about, you know, taking blows to the head? We know that footballers statistically are more likely to develop things like Alzheimer's and dementia yeah. because of heading the ball. Um, and obviously, you know, you're getting hit a lot harder than that in the ring. Do you worry about that long term? I do. There's a saying in boxing, it's punch drunk. Yes. And obviously, over the time, keep getting hit in the head. It can't be great for you. And it is something I worry about. I bet, yeah. I'm hoping that Tyson does retire in the next few years, like, shortly, but he says he'll probably box on until he's 40. Mm. And tell us how he is now, then, because obviously he's, he's headlong into this sort of tunnel vision to the fight at the weekend. Um, can you... Do you sort of have that sort of symbiotic relationship where you can just feel how he's feeling right now in these next few days, the tension, yeah. the focus? Just give us a sense of what that's like. No, there's no tension at all in Tyson's camp. Tyson is so relaxed and it relaxes everyone around him. There's only, like, his family members that are all, like, 
squeezed up and feel terrible inside because we mm. know what he's going in for. But he knows, and it doesn't phase him. He doesn't get nervous. He doesn't get anxiety. He doesn't worry about it. The fight is what he loves. It doesn't cause him stress. I think that's why he loves it so much. So he doesn't get he doesn't get frightened. He doesn't Not get ring all. ring fear. And I suppose they can't. No. If you're going to go in he and thinks... do that, you've got to believe you're going to win no matter what. Yeah. Can I ask you? I mean, obviously the children are a really uh, you know, a great source of joy, all of them to you. What? How do you feel about the children watching? Because I saw a little trailer for the episode this week. Yes. Um, and there's a. I think that one of your daughters is crying, and there's an ambulance, and it it is feels quite traumatic for children to see. I mean, lots of parents wouldn't want their children to watch yeah. boxing anyway, but they're watching their dad in the ring. Tell well, me how you feel about that. This is something that I've always felt strongly about that I do not want the children to go to the fights live because that's something you can't control. If the situation gets bad, you can always knock the television off. Mm. But I've never had the children at the fights. They've only been to one fight of their dad's, and um, I'd never take them again. I didn't want them there in the and first place. And would Tyson let any of the kids do boxing themselves, professionally, the way he has? He doesn't want to push them into it. He's tried his hardest to sell the boys, and the kids, go into business. It's not good to get your head punched in for money. Right. But, but he wouldn't stop them if they wanted to. He wouldn't to stop them, yeah. no. I might try and stop them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's you're, bad enough watching him. You're fantastically honest. I wish politicians were as honest as you are. Because you, 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 you really work... Well, you, no, though. you really work to answer the question, which is just so refreshing. So here's, here's a little googly for you, but you don't have to answer if you don't want. We're talking about smacking kids uh, today. Do you, do you... And Tyson, have you ever smacked yours, or do you smack yours? No, we... imagine Tyson Fury. <laughs> no, Tyson won't no, smack no, the kids. No, I, I imagine really he doesn't. Would sort of, like, like, really scold them and tell them, but he yeah. won't. He refuses to. Of course. But I'll, I'll smack them on the bum slightly, yeah. but I won't. You can't smack your children. You've just got to try and teach them through sort of a punishment, haven't you? Like, right, you're not having your PlayStation, you're not having a biscuit. But when they're sort of that. toddlers and stuff and they can't quite understand what you're saying, you know, you've got them all of all different ages. Yeah. Do you find that there is just a point where a, a smack for shock rather than obviously hurting? You know, do you, you can't, yeah, how uh, could you hurt a child? How could you actually sit there and hurt your child? That I just don't see the relation of that. I do think you need to teach them, I think you need to scold them and tell them, like, that's wrong, that's right, or you'd just... Well, my house would be an absolute riot worse than it is. Yeah. But I don't <clears> think you can actually, um, like, really smack them. I think a tap on the hand, hurt, a tap on the bum. Yeah. I think yeah. that's, I think that's like, enough just to give them the shock to say, um, right, you can't do that. But as they get older, clearly, you know, a tap on the hand isn't going to hurt them, so you've got to talk to them. Yeah. And so. what I find fascinating about watching you in this documentary is that you still do all your own cleaning and all your own cooking and everything, don't you? Yeah. Now, most people, if they're in your position, they're like, I'm having it all, I'm having all yeah. the luxuries. <laughs> You're just... What, what is that about you? I mean, you're just very grounded, aren't you? I don't want my children to grow up and look at, oh, you get a maid, you get a cleaner, you get a cooker, and you don't do nothing, and you walk around all day looking mm. glamorous. I mean, that's life is work, life is hard, you've got to get on with it. And I want the kids to understand that. I don't want them to grow up spoiled. spoiled. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And um, how are they? Are they aware of what daddy's up to at the weekend? They know it's coming. Do they, they get worried? Do they know what it means? I don't think they worry because they're just not of that age to understand. Yeah. They just think dad's going for a fight, dad's going to win. Mm. Um, and I obviously try and keep it that way. But they are, they're all excited, they're aware of dad's situation. Just coming back where we began with the two of you and your relationship. Um, Everybody gets asked this question if they have what is clearly a happy marriage and they're in the public eye. But what, what's your secret? What, what is the reason that you love each other so completely? Do you, any any theories think, on that? I think in, in our relationship, it's like it's never... It's, we're not going to fail. There's no, there's no failing. We're going to keep going. Whatever hits us, we're going to stay full together. Full commitment, yeah. And it's full commitment. And if I'm down, he's picking me up. If he's down, I'm picking him up. And that's how I think we get along. And how important is physical attraction, do you think? You know, fancying your partner. Fancy my partner, did I fancy Tyson at 28 stone? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I don't think it's... I think it's irrelevant. I think if you yeah. love someone... It's like when I've had the children over the last few years, I'll go as big as a barn. And <laughs> I, don't think that, I don't think that's relevant at all. I think if you love someone, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant of their looks. And can I ask you, obviously... Obviously, he's going to win. Obviously. We don't, there's no oh. question over that. He's going to win. Um, what's your... In the in doc, what I found interesting was that you say, look, the win is the best bit, the fight is amazing. It's the weeks afterwards where you start to think, how's he going to cope? Mm. Yeah. Tell us a bit about that before you go. That obviously, sat he's going to win at the weekend, and then what happens Well, then you've got the high the of all that excitement and everybody coming round and giving you the pat on the back, and that's lovely. But then you've got the calm, where you come home and it's quiet, and you haven't got that rigorous routine to have to keep going every day. Mm. And then, obviously, Tyson's... Sort of like, well, what are we doing today? And that's when you see the little demons creeping back in. And it's just the time to keep busy and try and keep some support going because he does get down still and you've still got to try and keep... I mean, he has got level. depression, hasn't yes. he? I mean, it's not a... I don't think it's a curable problem. I think it's something you have to learn you have to, to live, live with. with. Yeah. And do you have any idea what, what causes it with him? Is it something that he was born hereditary. with, you think? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think so. I think his family suffered with depression in the past and I think it's come hereditary from him.
Yeah. He's always been the same, even as a young teenager when we were first going out, you could see highs and lows. It's very difficult living with somebody with depression, how, how, you know, especially when it goes on and on. How do, you, how do you keep your patience and your tolerance yeah. of it? I think it's made it better now I understand that it is a diagnosed problem. Yeah. Um, because before I always used to think, shake it off, get up, what are you doing? Mm. Like, why, why have you got a problem and you're just being selfish? But it isn't a selfish, it's a self... I do think it's a selfish disease. I don't think the person is selfish. I think it's just one of them things that it's all about that person and you can only try and help them. Mm. It's just... It's hard on everyone around them, but you've got to be supportive, cos look at the outcome.